No ant was thinking, how do we form a food line? No. The queen ant doesn't design this. She just forms, a, she just fulfills a, because um, that's the question I get. Well, doesn't the queen ant organize this? No, she just fulfills a reproductive function. It's all bottom mm. up. The ants are just paying attention to the local pheromones and the physical sense of the sugar cube. And mm. that creates the food line, something yeah. from nothing. Now, when you look at, um, and this gets us actually to rule number three, <laughs> um, when you look at a line, you're standing and you see this food line, um, you look down, it looks like all the ants are following the line and it's really dramatic. We all know what that looks like. Yeah. But if you kneel down and look closely, there's always a few ants that aren't following the line. And, um, you know, this was like the ant I would find in my mother's kitchen when I was a kid. This is yeah. my editor cut out virtually all my personal stories from the book, but left this one. in. And I, right. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's not a memoir. I had to like get over that and um, learning to write. And, and so, um, you know, I would get it on a piece of paper, you know, proto Buddhist. Um, this is when I'm like five, six years old. And I would carry it outside back to the ants yeah. outside the back door. Um, trying to save it. And I thought this was a stupid aunt who had wandered too far from home. Hmm. My mom knew exactly what this was. This was the random aunt that wasn't following the food line and so would likely find the food source in her kitchen, lay down the scent trail and begin the home invasion. So she thought, kill the ant and call the exterminator. <laughs> and she was absolutely right. If you want to keep your kitchen ant free. Um, so, um, how many ants aren't following the line? If you look, it's it's a few percent. If there's too much randomness in the system, you can't get food lines. You can't get any organization whatsoever. But too little randomness. If there were no other ants, then what are the ants going to do when the food source runs out? It's If you step your foot in the middle of a food line, it's the ants that are not part of the line that quickly establish the quickest route around your foot. When the food source runs out, it's these random ants, divergent ants, small numbers of them that are likely already finding the next food source. Mm -hmm. So the randomness is what allows the colony to explore alternate ways of organizing as the, as the environment changes. All the creative dynamism of life, of adaptation, um, comes from this low level randomness. Stu Kaufman, who's one of the founders of complexity theory, um, uh, and actually, I'm, I'm extraordinarily lucky. He's become a good friend. Um, and he fact-checked the book for me <laughs> to make sure I wasn't doing anything, saying anything stupid. Um, he uh, refers to the possibilities that arise from this randomness in the current moment um, as the um, adjacent possibles. So in every moment, a living thing, because of this low level randomness, has sort of a shimmering cloud of adjacent possibles around it, one of which will be selected for the next moment of the colony. Hmm. Now, most of the time, these are adaptive. They aren't always. Inevitably, yeah. and I discuss the mathematics behind this in the book, inevitably, there will be mass extinction events. Um, they can be mitigated they can sometimes be avoided through interventions. 